Good morning guys, Tosh coming at you, February the 15th, 2021, and we're just in our downstairs storage location for TR parts, everything from TR3A seats to 250 to early TR6 to late TR6 seats. There's the hardtop for the Surrey, backlight, new triplex windscreen for the TR8, we've got some headers over there for the TR8, a roll bar for a TR3, and so on and so forth. There's a dash for a TR3A grass shields for a TR8. Anyway, we are down here on a mission. We are going to try to find that new rear wiring harness I have for the TR250 that's tucked away over here in some of these bins. I kind of have them, I think, segregated by car, for example. I think the first row of bins is for the TR3A. So uh, we'll be able to discount some of the bins, but we'll still have quite a search to go through the rest of the bins to find the little wiring harness. Anyway, wish me luck. We'll... Uh, Hopefully find it down here as I exhausted my upstairs search in my uh, upstairs storage location for parts. All right, Mike is coming to inspect the work. See what's new. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? All right, we managed to find the um, new wiring harness still packed away in its box, so that's good to go. Found a few other things that could be of use, like the uh, old um, coolant overflow bottle lid that I was missing on my new bottle, so I can probably clean that up. I've actually found two of them. There's another one over here that I found, so we could probably clean that up and utilize that. So always good to keep spare parts, old spare um, rear bumpers. I'm thinking the lights might be still good to use on those. Found a bunch of uh, wiper wheel boxes that I might be able to rescue. And a whole bunch of other saw odds and sods in here that uh, are going to help me along with the restoration. All right, that's it for now, guys. We'll uh, make it out to the garage shortly. All right, guys, just picking up where we uh, left off yesterday. And if you recall, I was mentioning that there's actually a little uh, tab that holds that uh, clutch master hose, the hard line, down. And you can see that I've actually drilled a hole for it after doing some research. There is a location that that's supposed to be. So I've got the little hole down for it. So we're going to go ahead and install that first before we do anything else right, out here Here's today. what the original uh, hold down looked like. So uh, pretty small and a little rusty. So we've gone with a brand new stainless steel hold down. I think it looks perfect. So that's where that goes. So I came to the realization yesterday while I was watching my video uh, last night that uh, I'm probably going to have an issue getting the vent in the side here on the... Uh, driver's side without having to move the clutch master out of the way and I actually tried to fit that vent in there this morning and I was correct so we're gonna have to actually remove this to be able to get the wing vent back in so it's a good thing that I kinda noticed that I'm sure I would have come to me sooner than later but it's a good thing that uh, we didn't get too far and uh, hook up you know the, the pedal the clevis pin to the pedal and I probably won't end up hooking up the hose solidly here uh, to the slave either, knowing that we need to move this out. So, just a quick update on that, that uh, that will have to be relocated temporarily while we fit the vents in. But again, that's going to be much later in the project, once we get to installing the uh, body panels, once they're painted. So, just a quick update on that. All right, guys, All right. here is that uh, union piece that I was talking about that's uh, really expensive for what it is. I can't exactly remember how much it is in the catalog. I'm going to say it's uh, 16 or $17 just for this little fitting here. That's just off the top of my head. I just know it's very expensive. So I actually have a couple of them here. I've saved one from an old line off my TR6. And this is the actual one that came off the TR250. So we're just going to use this, reuse this fitting. Uh, this one's already been, looks like it's been sandblasted a little bit. So we're going to pop the fitting out of here and then we'll connect up the... Uh, the clutch slave holes, hose to the hard line, uh, just temporarily anyway, we'll just connect it up loosely just so we have that fitting installed there. All right, there's that same fitting just cleaned up with a brass brush. So uh, we'll go ahead and install this and uh, we'll call that done. Move on to another All right, we're project. gonna add uh, two big parts to the car uh, just to get them out of the way. Uh, these are the bumper mounting brackets that go on the chassis and attach to the sides of the uh, radiator protection shield underneath the car. So in this case, um, I do not have the hardware for these two locations because I had to grind it off and punch it out of the frame because they were rusted solid. So 
I just want to do a little, little section here on what do you do if you don't know the hardware that's used from the factory uh, to put these pieces back together or if you've lost the hardware for example. So what I normally do is I have a reference guide here. This is the spare parts manual for the uh, Triumph TR250 that utilizes the factory plates here. Um, this is from the Roadster factory, but I believe places like Revington TR also have the plates displayed. Uh, Tr Roadster factory also has catalogs for the TR6 that are usually a good reference. They're fairly close to the TR250 as far as fasteners are concerned. Um, so you should be able to find a lookup of what hardware is actually required. So in this case, we're looking at numbers 17 and 18 for the actual bolt. So if I go down here and look for 17 and 18, it's telling me I need HB924 and HB922. So what I've done this morning already is, uh, while I was having my morning tea, I actually went and looked uh, at the back here. And uh, here's the reference here. So again, I just wrote this down this morning. So HB924, according to this, is a bolt 3 inch length. HB922 is a bolt 2 and 3 quarter inch length. And we know that it's actually a 9 16 inch wrench size. So there you go. So I've got that all written down so I can come out in the garage this morning, find hardware for this, and put these back on the car fairly easily. So what I require, 3 inch bolt for the front location, 2 and 3 quarter inch bolt for the rear location, two washers, uh, one, uh, sorry, two washers per bolt, one lock nut, and one nut per bolt. Okay, so we'll put those on the car. Uh, one more way to look the fasteners up, and I'll try to put a link of this in the description below. Uh, there's a standard Triumph hardware guide that you can actually look up the actual part number. So if I'm looking for HU806, it will tell me in the standard hardware guide what exactly that is. So that should give you some help as well. So I'll try to put that link in the description below. All right, not sure where I'm left off. I had a visitor stop by the garage, so it got me a little bit off track. But the bumper bars are now installed. You can just see them here and over there. So they are installed loosely. We're going to have to go back and reposition them slightly when we decide what we're going to do as far as a front bumper is concerned. Uh, I am going to be running uh, no front bumper, and uh, I'm going to be fabricating some uh, special brackets to hold some driving lights, so stay tuned for that. I've got something in mind for it, and I'll have to fabricate it, so I'll bring you along when we get to that point. As far as the engine bay is concerned, I think I've pretty much gone as far as I can go at this particular point. I do have a battery box coming, um, so that is in the mail, and I think that should be arriving tomorrow. So we'll put that in. Carburetors, I've got a little bit of work to do on those, so they can't go on until that is done. So that'll be a separate uh, addition to the engine bay will be the carburetors. So other than that, other than the wiper motor, and I've been sort of digging through parts, and I've got the wiper racks out to try to figure out if I have enough stuff to put the um, wiper rack in or not. Remember I had mentioned that I was waiting for the uh, fitting kit and the, uh, the jets and uh, stuff for the wipers uh, to make that happen. And I may be able to cobble some stuff together between I've got two extra racks from an earlier uh, TR3 and I believe they're the same wheel boxes as a TR250. So I might be able to borrow some parts from my TR3 project. We will see. So, what are we going to do next? Well, I've got these parts kicking around. These are uh, the scuttle uh, ceiling plates. So basically these go here between the outer fender and the inner fender and they block this orifice here to make sure that no water or debris gets in. So I think that we're going to fit those up just to get them on the car and out of the way. So let me break those open. It kind of makes more sense once you see them. Um, and I'll get them on the car. Alright guys, here's the sealer plate kit and here's the Roadster factory part number RFK755. This is for the uh, left hand side and obviously there's a different part number for the right hand side. You'll have to look that up. But basically what you get is the uh, the plate and the seal and the hardware kit. I believe this is separate. Uh, a separate seal. There's the part number on that guy. So it's been a while since I've done these, and the uh, last time I did it was on my TR6. And it's not really making too much sense to me what these two holes up here are for. But this generally bolts something like this along the plate. I don't think there's anything that actually bolts it solid to the actual car. Now that seal, uh, this seal here, goes on the top of the plate something like this. 
and it's riveted to the plate and then that buffer actually uh, this seal actually touches the outside of the fender of the inner fender to prevent a seal all the way to the top. Now the thing is this thing needs to be riveted on here somewhere but I guess we'll have to wait and uh, figure out where we're going to drill holes and rivet that until we actually get the fenders on. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to store this guy and uh, we'll mount this thing and this seal along with the kit and then we'll figure out when we're ready to put the fenders on we'll do a little test and see how high that needs to be mounted and riveted on to seal that up properly. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, there's the uh, plate installed on the driver's side and uh, I think we need to trim the seal a little bit. Remember this is going to go up here somewhere to meet the uh, inner fender. So we'll attach that at a later date once we figure out how high or how low that needs to go. And I believe that will get trimmed off a little bit. It uh, seals not too bad. We probably need a little bit of seam sealer at the bottom. So just as a note, uh, when I got this car, it did not have these plates installed. As a matter of fact, we had to weld on this flange to even hold the seal because this was not even on the car when we got it. So Lynn, I believe, uh, bent those up and welded those on one day when he was over so we could actually install these. So we're now putting them to work now. But if you can imagine this whole cavity behind the wheel being open right to the A post would not have been a good thing. So those look good. We'll put the passenger side on and then we'll move on to something else. All right, else. those sealer plates are on and look good. And we'll revisit those when the time comes to put that top seal on, as mentioned. We've got the uh, bonnet pull cable to install and the associated grommet that goes in the firewall. That goes here. I don't know if you can see the little hole just to the right of the uh, clutch master. That goes through here and then it's got a strange sort of routing across the top of the bulkhead over to where the catch will be eventually. Um, so let's see if we can get this installed properly. So I got a little sidetracked. I'm uh, gonna have to go in and uh, see how that cable is run before I run it. I've got the two little fasteners on the bulkhead ready to go to capture that cable. And then I started thinking about the catch plate which I hadn't seen in a while which mounts over here that that cable hooks up to and that's something I have not refinished yet. So it is over here. So that's going to be blasted and painted uh, probably tomorrow now. There's my emergency backup uh, release cable that I'll have to install at some point. So I got a little sidetracked looking for that stuff and then I ended up finding my hardware for my hood hinges. So I've just tapped those holes out and we've got the fasteners ready to go over here. So we may as well put the hood hinges in or the bonnet hinges in. Well, we're here. Again, they're black. They're supposed to be blue, but I'm going to see if the uh, black grows on me. I'm quite liking the, uh, the valence bars in black. And like I said, I don't think the hood hinges are going to bother me in black either since the, the buckets for the taillights, which come through here, are also black. So I've got a whole black thing going on at the front of the car. All right. Be back in All a minute. right. Hood hinges are in. And I think they look okay in black. Um, so we're going to put a little bit of tape here just in case they fall. I don't want them to mark up the uh, wheel wells at the front. Uh, I'm going to go inside now and check out the uh, net and see if I can find a picture of the cable routing. And uh, we'll come back out and we'll fix that. And then we'll figure something else to do. We'll probably do one or two more things before the end of tonight. And then we'll call it a day. So let's tape those up. We'll go in, come back out, and figure out something else to do. Just another quick uh, restoration tip. You might have seen I've got bits of pool noodle laying around the uh, garage and I use it often in my restorations just to protect stuff so in this case I've just cut a pocket in this and we're just going to slide it over even though I've taped this up we're just going to slide it over and uh, this pocket will keep that uh, hood uh, hinge safe from hitting the uh, inner wheel well. Yeah, just working away here can't remember where I left off and what I showed you so that is the way the cable is run so we have it affixed to the bulkhead and we'll hook it up to the uh, catch later on. Um, I'm just about to do the safety release. So I've got a grommet in the hole here that I drilled through right there. So we'll uh, stick this emergency bonnet release thingy that I made up through there and uh, we'll fasten that on and get ready to put that catch on 
I don't know, maybe tomorrow night after the paint dries, we'll uh, try to get it on there, but uh, let's get this on right now. Get it out of the way. Alright, that emergency cable is now installed. Actually, I didn't need a grommet there, I forgot. That pushes up and bolts there, so that's looking good. So I think we're going to call it a night out here. I didn't get a ton accomplished today, just some little uh, fiddly things. But at least we got some stuff back on the car. So tomorrow, as mentioned, I think what I'm going to do is uh, try to sandblast and paint this bonnet catch so we can get that on the firewall. I think before I do that, I want to get my plate back on the firewall because I'm going to have to get a rivet gun in here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to have clearance once I get that uh, catch on here. So we might want to do that before we put the catch on. So we'll have to uh, dig that up somewhere. I think it's inside the house actually. Oh, I put this seal on and uh, just happened to have it kicking around in my parts bin. I think it's a little bit too long. I think it needs to end here, but I haven't cut it yet. So we'll have to do a little bit of research on that for the uh, 250s as well. I think the TR6, it goes all the way across, but the 250, I think it might actually stop here. Anyway, we'll figure that out. So that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll get back out here tomorrow after work. It's supposed to be a snowy one. I think uh, 25 centimeters, about 10 inches, I think, over the next uh, couple days in snow. So we shall see if it arrives. All right, have a good night, guys. Thanks. All right, guys, now Tuesday afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Spent a bit of time shoveling today. A lot of snow overnight, as you can probably see here, out the door. Yeah, drift is pretty high over there. Anyway, hopefully it'll stop snowing soon and I can stop shoveling. Anyway, back on the car. I think what we're going to do today is uh, we're probably going to try to do the windshield uh, wiper motor and rack installation. That's number one. It's not a particularly um, fun job to do since you need to be up and under the car quite a bit to get the wheel boxes in and thread that cable through. So not looking forward to it in particular. The other job I would like to do uh, in the near future is actually put the fuel tank back in. I think I have all the components for that. I've got the fuel tank up there cleaned and ready to go. So uh, I think we might attempt to get that back in the car later on today as well. But we'll see how the, uh, the wiper motor and rack installation goes first. I'll try to take a little video along the way, but it's pretty difficult to video up in, in under the car. Uh, and it's going to be fairly challenging, so we'll see how that works out, whether I get frustrated or not. Anyway, that's it for now. All right, here a is a quick look at um, all the components for the uh, wiper mechanism, wiper wheel boxes, whatever you want to call it. So obviously the wiper motor up there. Here are the wheel boxes themselves, and I'm trying to find a good set. I've got some spares over here, but some of them have, uh, you know, this one is bent. I don't know if you can see that. So it's bent. This one over here, the splines on the shaft here that uh, will fit onto the wiper blades are all stripped, so that one is no good. This one's not too, too bad. This one actually came off the car. You can see the blue uh, paint on it, so this would be a good backup. These two seem to be the best out of the five that I have that will work for this car. Here are the, uh, the jets uh, mechanism. So uh, I've got a couple here that are broken and a couple that are not too, too bad. Uh, I am going to order new ones of these, but I can use these temporarily. Here are the uh, little uh, bezels that fit on the actual down here onto the um, shaft of the uh, wheel box. Uh, some new chrome nuts. It's the only thing new I have for this system at the moment. And then the rack itself, so just a wire rack. And then the tubing that goes on the inside of the car between the wheel boxes. So I'll try to show you that under the car. I've already got one of the tubing in there with one of the grommets. So this will actually hook up to the actual wiper motor itself. So anyway, we'll get to trying to install that and we'll try to take you a few uh, videos along so the way. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you're reusing your old uh, wiper wheel boxes, you want to clean all that old grease out of there. So just using some brake cleaner, we've got this one cleaned up. I'm not sure well, well you're going to be able to see that. But that's nice and clean now. So we're just wiping uh, this down with brake cleaner. Uh, remove all the grease residue and we'll re-grease it once we get it back in the car before we put the actual rack uh, together. All right, we're going to try to do a little bit of a different installation. Well, different for me anyway from the way it normally goes. I'm going to attempt to install the wheel boxes first and then I'm going to try to fix the cable into the wheel boxes. 
I already have the one on the driver's side. I don't know if you can see it there in frame. But here are the components. So let me just grab this. So you've got the wheel box itself. All right. You've got the, uh, the top bezel, which will have the squirter included as well. I've just taken the squirter out for now. And then you'll have your lock nut. So there's the lock nut. So this basically goes up. You also have this bottom little uh, collar that goes on and you'll figure it out which way it goes. That is the way it basically goes for to fit up inside. So that goes up through the uh, opening and you can just grab it up here. You see I've taped around here just to protect this a little bit. So that will fit something like that. Then the actual uh, bezel will go on top to keep it there. And then you've got the chrome nut in your wrong hand. There we go. Then you can just affix it there with your new chrome nut if it cooperates with you. And it'll suspend that wheel box where it needs to be. Okay. So that is there. Now we'll go on to the next step. So the next thing I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to feed this uh, rack cable through the piping here on the bulkhead. I've got the one pipe in, so that's the leading pipe. That goes through a center pipe that fits between the two wheel boxes. There are little channels in the wheel boxes for this to fit in. And then this is the pipe that goes on the very end on the uh, passenger side. So we'll put this through with the understanding that we're going to have to slide this rack through these pipes as we go to the interior of the car. All right, we've got our tubing installed. So you can just see the lead piece there on the left hand side, I think, and uh, the center piece on the right hand side. And then there's a small piece on the very end. Be careful you do not lose that down this scuttle, although you'll never retrieve it without a magnet. And you might be able to see a little bit here. You can sort of see the tube running through here and where the wheel box is well aligned between the two tubes. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the motor on and attach it to the cable end here so I can get the actual uh, position of the cable before I try to stick it in the wheel boxes. All right, we're going to take the top off the motor just with these little uh, quarter inch screws. Uh, the cable end goes in here and there's a mechanism inside where the cable attaches to. We'll show you that when the uh, top comes off. All right, here's a look inside the wiper motor. So what we need to do is we need to release this mechanism here, which actually hooks up to the cable. So we have to top, uh, pop off this little spring clip here to be able to lift that up and off. And I'm always dreading that for reasons I won't talk about. Uh, we're gonna also grease this uh, motor up before we put the cap back on just with some synthetic grease. Uh, we're going to use that grease as well on the rack and wheel boxes as well. So let's go ahead and pop that off. Wish me luck. So the contact and the spring keeper are off and here is the plate that we are trying to get to. So that will just lift off the gear now and that is the end that attaches to the actual wiper rack. So this is the part where it gets challenging. Bit of a jigsaw puzzle. So we need to hook up the rack to the motor. So uh, I've just got it lo bolted loosely here with one fastener. There's two fasteners that hold this entire unit in. So we're going to have to uh, connect the cable up and then put the, uh, the uh, contact and uh, clip back on. And we need to screw the cover back on before we put it in its actual position. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. Hopefully. Alright, here's what it looks like. So we've got the rack attached to the uh, motor. There's a little uh, slot that fits down here for this nut that drops in. That's nice and flat in the channel now, hooked up to the mechanism. We still need to add our contact and spring clip. Then we'll screw down the nut to attach the rack to the motor and we will put the cap back on, hopefully. All right, guys, wiper motor is now officially in. It's actually connected in three points. There's one here and then two inside. One's a... Uh, an, uh, nut and screw and the other one's actually uh, threaded into the actual bracket itself so that's all good so back to uh, trying to get the wheel boxes on hopefully this is going to work now it's a fair amount of work to put the uh, wiper motor in 
Anyway, that's looking good. Um, there is a ground pickup. I'm not sure where it picks up, whether it picks up um, on the lug back here. So here's the ground wire. So I'm not sure if it comes back here and grounds or if it grounds on one of these or somewhere else. So we'll have to look that up. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll get back under the car and see if we can get the wheel boxes fitted. All right, so here's the uh, cable and the wheel box. So basically what we need to do now is put the cable underneath the, uh, the gear and we're going to make sure we obviously grease that up as well and uh, the rack itself and uh, then we'll put the covers on and the covers pick up the two if you notice the um, flanges on the tubes the covers will actually fit within those flanges so hopefully I can put that together and get you a better view of that so it makes more sense that's what we're up to now so there's what I mean by engaging the uh, gear with the uh, wiper rack so now we'll try to fit the covers and uh, see how that goes. All right, guys, the uh, wheel boxes are now all hooked up and the screws have been secured on the plates to lock in the cable. I don't know if you can see that very well. Anyway, next thing to do is to test it. So we're gonna hook it up to a battery pack and uh, we'll test to make sure that the wiper rack moves back and forth as it should before we put the uh, ceiling plates back on. So let's hook that All up right, now. Just got our little booster pack here hooked up with a couple of uh, alligator clips. And uh, we're gonna hook this up to the low speed, I believe. Actually, I'm not even sure how to hook the high speed up, but anyway, let's go with low speed, which is this wire here. And they seem to be working just fine. I haven't got the park feature hooked up yet, which is that black ground wire there. Perfect. Nice and quiet. You see that up there. Looks great. Nice and smooth. I'm happy with that. So we can now put the ceiling plates on. I rarely use my windshield wipers anyway on any of my cars. Usually I just use Rain-X, but obviously you need the wipers to work for uh, safety and certification so they will work on to the next thing and before we move on from the uh, wiper wheel box installation I just wanted to share one tip with you and this probably will be helpful if you don't have one of these this is a uh, screwdriver magnetizer maybe you possibly have a set of magnetized screwdrivers but if you don't you can magnetize pretty much any screwdriver just by sliding this across this magnet and if you want to demagnetize it there's an area you can slide to demagnetize it. So this just happens to be from Wera Tools and most of my screwdrivers are Wera brand. Anyway, it helps to be able to magnetize the screwdriver so you can hold the screws um, and they don't fall off obviously. So you, when you're working up under the confines of the dash, for example, and you're trying to reach up to thread into those little wheel box uh, fasteners, it's very, very helpful. Otherwise you're gonna be dropping screws down into the scuttle area and there can be difficult to locate them again. So you want to do the best you can to keep those on the end of your screwdriver and having them magnetized really, really helps. So there's just a quick tip for so you. So these are the wheel box covers. And as you can see, I've put some seam sealer on the inside where these plates fit up to the bulkhead. So we'll go ahead and we'll screw those in and we'll be done with the uh, wiper wheel box All right, the wheel box covers are installed. I added just a little bit of extra sealer up there. As there are a little, uh, few little gaps. So they're good. So I'm going to... Uh, just loosen the uh, bezels off here and we'll remove the tape below this and then we're going to call this done for now until we install the windscreen and get the windscreen wipers uh, set up. Alright guys, we're going to call this done for now until I get my new uh, wheel box fitting kit and that way I can hook up the hoses on the inside of the uh, plenum to uh, hook up to the uh, washer bottle. So we'll do that at a later date. Um, so these are back ordered at the moment, so we'll get those in and we'll do the rest of the plumbing work when we get them. 
All right, it's about time to move on to the gas tank, I think. So I'll see if I can drag it down and we'll have a look at it. I guess this has been up there for a little while. And I paint in this garage. All right, let's uh, dig it out. All right, guys, we've got the uh, tank down off the shelf and uh, we're just having a quick look at it. I've got a new gasket for the sending unit. We're just taking a look inside to see if we can see what it looks like. It's pretty clean in there. So I'm happy about that. It looks relatively uh, rust free. There's a few spots of rust here and there, but not bad at all. So uh, we're good to go with this. So what I'll do is I'll put the gasket on the uh, sending unit and uh, then we'll get ready to install it in the car. There's a few things I need to do before I do that. There's some felt stripping that needs to go on here. And I'm thinking of doing some sound deadening on the uh, trunk be below the tank, so or the the uh, area below the tank. So let me have a look at that first. And all right, guys, uh, and we we'll just masked back. off the tank so we can add our uh, felt anti-rattle strips, and we're just going to uh, use some spray adhesive there. So I've just masked it a little bit to prevent the overspray. Although you'll never see the tank again. We are going to go with our old uh, felt strips, though. So here are the ones that came off the car. That's the back side of them. So they don't look too bad on the inside. Again, you're never going to see them. So they're just going to serve a uh, purpose. They're not going to be very aesthetically pleasing, but you'll never see them. All right, them. guys, we're just about ready to install the tank. I've just added a little bit of fat matte sound deadening on either side of the tank. We have the uh, foam seal there for the uh, drain uh, side of the tank. And then we've got the uh, grommet there for the filler side of the tank or the outlet side of the tank, which will go down to the hard line along the frame rail. So I think we're pretty much ready to go. We've got our grommet in here for the, um, for the cap and for the filler uh, neck. So yeah, tank uh, felt is on. We have all our fasteners there. We've tapped out the holes. Felt is on and nice and secure. Fuel line is on the bottom and we have another piece of soft line to go on that, which we should be able to attach after we get that in the car. So yeah, we're pretty much ready to go, so wish me luck. It's going to be uh, probably easier with two people, but we'll uh, try to manage with, with one. Trying to get it held up and get a fastener started is the, uh, is the challenge. Alright guys, the gas tank is officially in. It's a little challenging actually to get your hands up underneath uh, here to these two fasteners. And in actuality, those fasteners had been stripped out by the previous owner because I only had four bolts holding this tank in originally. Two on the sides and two on the bottom, so there's a bolt location there and then there's two bolt locations down here and then two up there well the two up there had not been installed by the previous owner so it was only hanging on four bolts previously anyway it's difficult to get your hand up in there as you can imagine even from the front side to try and uh, actually get those uh, bolts up there it's a bit of a challenge if you got uh, big sausage hands like me but we managed to do it with some uh, patience and persistence so it's in there we uh, have to put the um, the actual cap on at some point and uh, we're going to check the fuel outlet line and make sure it's in, in a good situation down below I think it should be okay but uh, yeah so I'm happy with that I'm happy to get that in and off the shelf another thing checked off the list I was going to put my little uh, body tag on here but I think we're going to call the night out here I'm getting a little tired and I don't want to screw that up so we'll leave that probably for tomorrow and uh, we'll get it back out here after work all right, guys, that's it for tonight. We'll upload this and uh, had a pretty good day doing, you know, the, the wiper wheel boxes was a major task to undertake and to complete. So I'm happy that I got that done at least. And the tank was just a bonus. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. See you later.